Live from New York, it's The Cube. Covering The Cube, New York City 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Uh, Kevin L. Jackson, author and founder of GovCloud. GovCloud, that's big. Yeah, GovCloud Network. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Right. I've been um, working on uh, cloud computing initially in the federal government uh, with the intelligence community as they adopted cloud computing for a lot of the uh, nation's major missions. And what's, what has happened is now I'm working a lot with commercial organizations and with the security of that data. And I'm going to sort of, uh, on your questions, piggyback on Karen. There was a time when you would get a couple of bottles of wine and they would come in and you would savor that wine and sip it and it would take a few days to get through it and you would enjoy it. The problem now is that you don't get a couple of bottles of wine into your house. You get two or three tankers of, of data. Um, so it's not that it's a new wine, you're just getting a lot of it. And the, the infrastructures that you need, before you could have a couple of computers and a couple of people, now you need cloud, you need automated infrastructures, you need huge capabilities. And artificial intelligence and AI, it's what's, what we can use as the tool on top of these huge infrastructures to, you know, drink that, you know, fire hose of wine. Yeah, fire hose, fire hose of wine. Of wine. <laughs> Everybody's having a great time. Yeah. Everybody's having a great time. <laughs> yeah, the, things are booming right now. <laughs> no. Peter, you and I were talking about, um, we has, had a couple of questions, sort of how far can we take artificial intelligence? How far should we? You know, so that brings in the conversation of, of ethics and bias. Why don't you pick it up? Yeah, so one of, the, one of the crucial things that we all are implying is at some point in time, AI is going to become a feature of the operations of uh, our homes, <laughs> our businesses, and as these technologies get more powerful and they diffuse, the knowledge about how to use them diffuses more broadly, uh, and you put more options into the hands of more people, the question slowly starts to turn from can we do it to should we do it? And one of the issues that I introduce is I think the difference between big data and AI, AI specifically is this notion of agency. The AI will act on behalf of perhaps you or it'll act on behalf of your business. And that conversation is not being had today. It's being, you know, it's being had in arguments between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg which pretty quickly get pretty boring. Uh, at the end of the day, the real question is, should this machine, whether in concert with others or not, be acting on behalf of me, on behalf of my business, or, yeah. and, by, and my, when I say on behalf of me, I'm also talking about privacy, because Facebook is acting on behalf of me. It's not just what's going on in my home. So that question of, can it be done? A lot of things can be done, and an increasingly number of things will be able to be done. We've got to start having a conversation about should it be done. So humans exhibit tribal behavior. They exhibit bias. Are their machine's going to pick that up. Go ahead, please. Yeah, one thing to sort of tag on to agency of artificial intelligence. Every industry, every business is now about identifying information and data sources and their appropriate sinks and learning how to draw value out of connecting the sources with the sinks. Artificial intelligence enables you to identify those sources and sinks, and when it gets agency, it will be able to make decisions on your behalf about what data is good, what data means, and who it should be or what delivered actions to. Are good. Or what actions are good. And what data was used to make those actions. Absolutely. And was that the right data, and is there bias in the data? and all the way down, all the turtles down. So all this, the, the data pedigree will be driven by the agency of artificial intelligence, and this is a big issue. But what, what this is really bringing up is if you look at society and culture, 
what's legal, what's ethical changes across the years. What was right 200 years ago is not right now. What was right 50 years ago is not right now. It changes across countries. So it, it changes across countries. It changes across regions. So what does this mean when our AI has agency? How do we make ethical AI if we don't even know how to manage the change of what's right and what's wrong in human society? Right. Well, wow. One of the most important questions we have to worry about, right? Absolutely. Well, we Absolutely. Gotta but it also says one more thing just before we go on. It also says that the issue of economies of scale in the cloud yes. are going to be strongly impacted not just by how big you can build your data centers, but some of those regulatory issues that are going to influence strongly what constitutes good experience, good law, good you know, acting on yes. my behalf, agency. And one thing that's underappreciated in the marketplace right now is the impact of data sovereignty. If you get back to data, countries are now recognizing the importance of managing that data and they're implementing data sovereignty rules. Third, everyone talks about California issuing a new law that's aligned with GDPR and you know what that meant. There are 30 other states in the United States alone that are modifying their laws to address this issue.